three, two, one. What is up guys? Hope you're all doing well out there. So in this video, we're going to be covering something very similar to the Jeffrey Epstein slash Ghislaine Maxwell case, which I've been breaking down for you guys, and which is the reason most of you guys subscribe to my channel. And um, so this story is very similar to the Epstein case. And if you haven't seen my videos on Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, I've been doing a basically step by step breakdown of everything that's been happening, all the major things that are happening in the case. And if you want to check out those videos, go to the top right hand corner over here and you can see the full playlist. So with that being said, let's jump to this. So this is about the Nexium cult, which is slightly similar, I would say even worse than the Jeffrey Epstein case. But I don't know. I mean, it depends on, you know, how how big the Epstein enterprise actually was. We don't know exactly how big it was even now. Uh, it could be much worse than we think. We might find out new details. But nevertheless, this one is really bad too. So I'm going to be breaking down everything from the basics and building on up. So the uh, most relevant thing, the most, the latest thing that's been, that's happened is that Claire Bronfman, who was one of the people who bankrolled this whole, whole operation has been sentenced by a federal judge. And that's what this, uh, the, uh, the story is. Now, my impetus for covering this is a personal one. That is because, uh, Alison Mack is one of my favorite actresses and she is mixed up in all of this as well. And it was very disappointing to, uh, to find this out for me. Very shocking. She was my favorite character on Smallville and, uh, she was just amazing. Like the most beautiful person inside and out, but apparently not according to the, uh, according to her own testimony, she did horrible stuff to some of the women that were involved here. So, you know, you never know. And also Hollywood can F up your brain and your life real bad. Um, uh, just looking at what happened to her. So very disappointing, but nevertheless, let's start with the sub subject of this video. And that is this woman. This is Claire Bronfman. Um, she is the heiress of the Seagram's fortune. So let me let me just lay this down for you guys. So the Seagram's heiress was sentenced on Wednesday for her role in the Nexium cult. She is to she's to spend 6 years and 9 months in prison. A federal judge ruled according to the New York Times. So let's go break this down from basics, okay? So what is Seagram's? Seagram's Company Limited, formerly known as Seagram's, was a Canadian multinational corporation formerly headquartered in Montreal, Quebec, originally a distiller of Canadian whiskey based in Ontario. It was once in the 1990s, the largest owner of alcoholic beverages in the world. So there you go. That's she's uh, the heiress to a big fortune, probably one of the richest people in Canada. Um, if she got all of her inheritance, which she probably did, which is why she was able to bankroll Nexium. Maybe she made it herself, but who knows? Irrelevant. So the next question is, what is Nexium, right? So Nexium is a self-described American multi-level marketing company based in Albany, New York, which offers personal and professional development seminars through its executive success programs of large group awareness training. The company has been widely described as a cult, that's because it is, according to all the court papers, and is alleged to have been a recruiting platform for a secret society, aka DOS, which means domination over submissives, I think, um, very creepy, or The Vow, I think there was a documentary on that, well, I called that, in which women were branded and forced into servitude, and servitude of many kinds um, in the bedroom, and also in uh, just labor servitude, which is very disturbing. It's like forced labor kind of, kind of deal. So let's get into more details of what happened to Bronfman here. Prosecutors said she was a bankroller behind the Nexium honcho Keith Rainier, putting out at least $116 million to fund the ostensible self-help organization. Now, Rainier, important note here, Rainier has already been arrested. He's uh, currently sitting, uh, he's waiting, excuse me, for his sentencing. I don't think that's taken place yet. I think it was supposed to take place in October. Uh, the last date I saw was like October 27th is when he's supposed to get his sentence. Um, it's weird that he was found guilty even before uh, Bronfman here. So I don't know why he hasn't gotten his sentence yet. Uh, maybe he has and I'm just missing it, but I don't think so. Um, but nevertheless, he's been found guilty just like her. But the sentencing is still, she, he's behind bars, so it doesn't really matter. But he's still waiting for his sentence. Anyways, keep going here. She ended up pleading guilty to charges of identity theft and immigration fraud. So, so if you guys are familiar with lawsuits and how they work, 
The prosecutors rarely get people for exactly the things that they are accused of. They usually get them for like lesser crimes. So identity theft and immigration fraud, that does not sound like an apt description of the things that she did. She bankrolled a cult that was forcing women into servitude of all kinds, labor and also intimate relations, forced intimate relations. And, uh, and so, yeah, but anyways, she's still going away for like, what, six, six years, six years and nine months. That's still a lengthy prison sentence. So I don't think it was necessarily, um, you know, a failure. That was that's a pretty good sentence, although I think it should have been like eight or 10 years. She bankrolled this whole operation. So that's pretty bad. But anyways, that's just my opinion. So let's keep on rolling here. Rainier was found guilty in June 2019 on a slew of charges, including racketeering and trafficking conspiracy. Authorities said this male defendant was abusive and controlling of women who joined the organization. He was not the only one. Allison Mack was also, unfortunately, uh, doing similar things. Trial revealed a slew of lurid allegations. For example, a number of women were branded with Renier's initials. One victim identified as Daniela said he encouraged her to get an abortion as a way to lose weight. So losing weight and being thin was a big deal here. They were literally put on starvation diets, similar to what, what's been accused happened with Epstein. And it was a different thing because he just wanted the women to look younger, but this guy wanted the women to be thinner. And so he put them on like starvation diets. Um, and this is just disgusting, um, <laughs> uh, forcing an abortion or encouraging an abortion uh, as to uh, lose weight, as a way to lose weight. And uh, another thing, um, according to her own testimony, Allison Mack was the one who came up with the idea for the branding. Now, I oh my god! I, as soon as I read that, I'm like, my brain, my my brain broke a little bit because I cannot believe that she would do that. She seemed like such a kind and just all around amazing person. I don't know how she got mixed up in this. I don't know why she got into this program. Something must have happened in her life that pushed her in this cult direction. I don't know what it was, but it's very disappointing to hear about. So here we go. Now the Ellison um, Mac part. He would recruit other women to help establish control. So this is similar to what Jeffrey Epstein did right with uh, Gillen Maxwell. Case in point, Smallville actress Allison Mack, who also pleaded guilty in the case. Quote, how is it empowering to make us take off our clothes to send photos to a man? End quote. Fair point. Victims said in court on Wednesday that Bronfman used her considerable resources to retaliate against them if they tried to leave Nexium, but the defendant told the judge in an August letter that she would not disown Rainier. So she still... She's still sticking to Rainier even after she's gotten in trouble and gotten a six year, six plus, six year plus sentence due to uh, being associating with this guy. Jesus Christ, man, how do these women become so obsessed with these lunatics? That is a question of a lifetime, okay? But, anyways, um, she, he, so she's still sticking by him. And this reminds me of the retaliation thing, reminds me of Jeffrey Epstein. So I just did um, a breakdown, one of my videos, part two, of the Virgin Islands complaint against Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein's estate. And one of the accusations, one of the, um, the facts that were presented in that case is that Jeffrey Epstein used his monetary resources to track down, to hunt down women who tried to run away. And uh, we also know, uh, according to Maria Farmer, that Gil and Maxwell called her and threatened her if if she were to like tell on them or to leave them that she would destroy her art and destroy her career and burn down uh, her house literally so these the 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 monetary retaliation and also the physical retaliation angle matches up with Jeffrey Epstein and Gillian Maxwell so i'm just making some parallels as they come to my mind here so let's keep going this is a quote from Bronfman Quote, many people, including most of my family, believe I should disavow Keith and Nexium. No, really. <laughs> and she says, and that I have not is hard for them to understand and accept. It's very hard for me and for the whole world, too. She wrote, quote, however, for me, Nexium and Keith greatly changed my life for the better. Now, this is similar to some of the stuff that Allison Mack's wife said because her wife is also an actress she used to be on uh, Battlestar Galactica um I can't remember her character's name right now god damn it 
It's uh, Callie. Yes, Callie, who was in love with Chief. Um, I love Battlestar Gal Galactic as well. But anyways, um, she, she Alison Mack married her. Uh, Alison Mack married that actress. I can't remember her real life name, but uh, she was also defending Renier and Nexium, saying that it's the greatest thing that happened to her. How effed up do you have to be to think that Nexium, this insane? You know, like f trafficking uh, and abuse organization is the best thing that happened to you. How do these people? Oh, how? Oh my God, man! I want to talk to these women. I want to talk to Allison Mack first of all because you know I loved her in Small World. But other than that, what the hell happened to her? She seemed like such an amazing person. And here's here's a clip uh, that one of my favorite clips from. Um, from Smallville that I want you guys to watch. This is like, I never thought that somebody like this could turn out to be, um, you know, to turn out to be, have done such insane things to other women, to other women. Somebody who cares about women's empowerment has done this to other women. Incredible. Like Chloe. Okay, wait, I'm not some crash test dummy you guys can use to try out your dating skills. You, if you like Lana so much, why don't you just ask her out and get it over with and you, stop acting like a Vegas bookie picks your dates. And both of you? treat me better love it i love it another one okay. oh uh did i get you we should go yeah well here we go i'll get the door okay Small World was a, was a uh, show that I watched during a very hard time in my life. Middle school was not a good time for me, and I, I made a close connection with all these characters. And Chloe was one of my favorite characters. So it's a, so I understand like when people when like these celebrities end up doing horrible things, like um, Bill Crosby. A lot of people love Bill Crosby, and I never understood how people could defend him. And I'm not defending Allison Mack, by the way, as you guys can see. I'm, I'm you know, she admitted to her crime, so her guilt is clear. And it's a similar thing with me and Allison Mack because she seemed like such a genuinely good person. Not 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 just like being a good actor, but like, you know, actors, they don't really get rid of their real personality. Like Tom Welling is not that different from his character uh, as Clark Kent in real life. I've seen him talk in interviews. I've seen him on Lucifer. He's not that different. Actors are not that good. They don't really change their personality that much. Where Their real personality sneaks through. And Allison, Allison Mack, did not seem like somebody who can do this stuff. I just couldn't believe it. And my brain was broken last night because I spent like three hours reading into every single article that's been published about what she did. And I don't know what's happening. I can't I just my my brain refuses to believe that she can actually do this. These things like the branding thing. She came up with an idea to brand Rainier's name on the women on on the backs of these women. And it's not made up. There are pictures of the brandings. OK, and these things were presented in court and Rainier is going to go to jail for a long time, probably like 40, 50 years. But um, anyways, it was just brain breaking to find out that somebody I loved, you know, obviously it's a character in a, in a show. But you, if you guys like certain TV shows and certain characters, you know how closely we identify with them, and especially if you if this was like during your childhood. But anyways, it was just extremely disappointing and I would genuinely love to talk to her and find out exactly why she did the things that she did because she like she was in tears and crying in court apologizing for everything she did and I, and I think it's genuine but I don't know how she got down this path, how she went down this path and did all this stuff for Rainier. I'm still shocked by it. I'm traumatized by it. But nevertheless, let's just finish this off. Nonetheless, if there is a single word to describe the overall attitude against this defendant, it is frustration. Some of the women at Wednesday's hearing called on her to disavow Rainier. At least one of them, Susan Dones, urged her in no uncertain terms. Quote, I pray that you will take claws of Keith Rainier out of you, and you will learn who Claire Bronfman really is. She said, quote, killing, he is killing you. So that's what Susan Doan said, and she was one of the people who were victimized by Rainier. And it is unbelievable to me that she is still defending this guy and saying that, saying that her family can't understand. Nobody understands why I'm still defending Keith and Nexium. Well, maybe because they were a horrible organization that tortured women and trafficked them. Maybe you shouldn't be associating yourself with them. What is your grounds? And this is a question for Bronfman that I would ask. What is your grounds for defending and sticking by these people? Do you think that it's wrong 
for these uh, for Renier and for Allison Mack to have treated these women this way. What is your defense? Like she's not even saying why. She's saying, oh, my family and everybody I know is it cannot believe that I'm still sticking by Keith and Nexium. That's what she said in her quote. So and she doesn't go on to explain why she says, oh, he changed my life. How how did how did ha was forcing people, forcing women into servitude and, you know, tricking them much like Epstein did. Epstein promised these girls uh, great careers and, you know, worldly experience traveling the world as massage therapists. That's what Epstein promised them. Um, Nexium promised them a uh, basically acceptance and empowerment. How is taking nude photos and being trafficked to rich men, which is what happened to some of these girls, and, you know, being humiliated in a million different ways by having to take pictures nude and all kinds of other humiliating, torturous events took place and the victims have testified in court and they're very disturbing. Um, but nevertheless, she doesn't go on to defend any of that. She's saying, okay, so despite all of that, it still changed your life for the better. How did it change your life for the better? See, these people say stuff like, oh, it changed my life. How did it change your life? Explain to me step by step how it changed your life. How did it make it better? Why was it bad before? How bad does your life have to be in order for Nexium and Keith Renier to fix it? That's my question. That would be the same questions that I would ask Allison Mack. Oh my God, dude. Like I said, totally, totally broke my brain. Um, very traumatizing. I didn't know after everything that I've exper experienced in my life, I didn't know I could be this disappointed and shocked by a story, especially because of Alison Mack and, um, you know, how much I loved her characters and how good of a person that I thought she was. I can't believe this. This is shocking to my core. So I will be making another video regarding this. I'll be explaining exactly what happened inside of Nexium, and also I'll be looking at Alison Mack's role in detail and what she herself has confessed. Um, to doing, which is very disturbing. But nevertheless, I think it's an interesting subject to talk about. And I can't believe that this this stuff is happening. How How is this happening in America? That's my question. I'm so shocked, man. I'm shocked out of my mind. But despite, you know, how shocked I am, it is happening. And we have to understand that it's happening. And there's evidence in courtrooms that's been presented that proves that it's happening. So it is happening. So we can't deny it, despite how unbelievable it might seem to us. We have to understand that this is happening and keep our eyes out and make sure that our loved ones don't fall for this lunacy, utter lunacy as well. So with that being said, if you guys want to support my work, you can do so down below by joining YouTube memberships or you can join Patreon right up here. With that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, peace. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch and consider some of the ideas I present in my videos. If you appreciate my evidence-based, non-partisan approach to reporting legal and political news, please consider supporting me on Patreon. My long-term goal on this channel is to get to a point where I can do news analysis full-time. Grassroots funding is the best way for independent news reporters to remain uncorrupted by corporate influences. Even if you can only afford $1 a month, those dollars add up in the aggregate, and it will be much appreciated by me. With that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, peace.